Imagine diving into the depths of an ancient ocean. The water around you is dark, mysterious, and teeming with life. But this isn't just any ocean. It's a prehistoric realm where danger waits at every turn. We've all heard of the mighty Megalodon and the fearsome Mosasaurus, but they're just the tip of the iceberg. Let's meet five of the most terrifying sea monsters you've probably never heard of. Our first stop on this underwater odyssey takes us further back in time than you might have thought possible over 500 million years, to be precise. Welcome to the Cambrian period, a time when life on Earth was undergoing a revolution. The so-called Cambrian explosion was in full swing, with new body plans and survival strategies evolving at a breakneck pace. In this alien world of prehistoric oceans, one creature stood out as a true pioneer of predation. Meet Lararapax unguispinus, whose name translates to spiny-clawed lyre-shaped predator. Picture, if you will, a creature up to three feet long, which doesn't sound too scary until you realize that most life at this time was mere inches in size. Lararapax had a segmented body reminiscent of a lobster with multiple pairs of legs that it used to swim through the ancient seas. But it's the head of this beast that would give you nightmares. Sprouting from its face was a pair of massive claw-like appendages called great appendages. These weren't just for show, they were precision hunting tools capable of grasping prey with deadly accuracy. Imagine a pair of serrated knife blades attached to a lobster's face, and you're getting close to the terror that was Lyrarapax. So what made Lyrarapax truly special was its place in Earth's history. This creature was one of the world's first apex predators, a pioneer of the predatory lifestyle that would come to dominate Earth's ecosystems for hundreds of millions of years to come. In a world where most life was small, soft-bodied, and relatively defenseless, Lararapax was like a living weapon, a harbinger of the arms race between predator and prey that continues to this day. As we leave the Cambrian behind, our time machine takes us forward to the Triassic period, roughly 250 to 200 million years ago. The world has changed dramatically. The supercontinent Pangaea dominates the globe, and the oceans are teeming with new forms of life. Among them, we find our next prehistoric predator, the peculiar and fascinating placodonts. At first glance, you might mistake a placodont for some kind of prehistoric turtle. They had broad, flattened bodies protected by a shell-like covering of bony plates. But take a closer look at their heads, and you'll realize these creatures were something altogether different and far more terrifying. Placodonts came in various shapes and sizes, but all shared one distinctive feature. Their mouths were armed with an arsenal of specialized teeth that made them the terror of ancient reefs. At the front of their jaws, they sported buck teeth reminiscent of a beaver. These protruding teeth weren't for gnawing on wood, though. They were precision tools for plucking shellfish from the seafloor. But the real horror show was further back in their mouths. There, placodonts had rows of flat plate-like teeth that worked like built-in nutcrackers. Once they plucked a shellfish from the reef, they'd move it to the back of their mouths and bring these crushing plates together, pulverizing the hapless mollusk shell and accessing the soft, nutritious meat inside. Imagine, a creature combining the shell of a turtle, the front teeth of a beaver, and the crushing power of an industrial press. That's a placodont for you. A perfect example of how evolution can produce highly specialized predators adapted to very specific ecological niches. Placodonts weren't just found in one small corner of the world either. Fossils have been discovered across what was once the Tethys Sea, an ancient ocean that covered much of what is now Europe the Middle East, and China. This wide distribution shows just how successful these armored shellfish crackers were. One particularly fascinating member of this group was Henodus, a placodont that took the group's adaptations to the extreme. Henodus had an almost perfectly circular body, protected by a shell that made it look like a prehistoric Roomba vacuum. Its mouth was adapted into a vacuum-like structure, perfect for sucking up small prey from the muddy seafloor. Now, we're swimming through time to between 290 and 250 million years ago to meet a creature so bizarre that it puzzled scientists for decades after its discovery. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Helicoprion, the spiral tooth terror of the ancient seas. Helicoprion was a type of cartilaginous fish related to modern sharks and rays, but if you're picturing a typical shark shape, think again. This creature had an adaptation so weird so seemingly impractical that it has become the stuff of paleontological legend. A lower jaw sporting not rows of teeth, but a spiral tooth whorl, 
like a circular saw made of nightmares. This world could contain up to 180 serrated teeth, arranged in a tight spiral that grew throughout the animal's life. When Helicoprion bit into its prey, this tooth whorl would rotate, slicing through flesh like a prehistoric chainsaw. For years, scientists struggled to understand how this tooth whorl worked. Early reconstructions placed it on the outside of the jaw, like some kind of bizarre elephant trunk. Others thought it might have been inside the throat. It wasn't until recent years, with the help of advanced CT scanning and 3D modeling, that we got a clearer picture of how this living buzzsaw actually functioned. The latest research suggests that the tooth whorl was housed inside the lower jaw. When Helicoprion opened its mouth, the newest, sharpest teeth at the end of the spiral would be exposed. As it bit down, the whorl would rotate, drawing prey further into the mouth while the teeth sliced it to ribbons. It was a feeding mechanism unlike anything alive today. But what did Helicoprion eat with this crazy tooth whorl? Fossil evidence suggests that it primarily hunted soft-bodied prey, like squid and other cephalopods. The rotating action of the whorl would have been perfect for grabbing onto slippery tentacles and drawing them into the mouth. Helicoprion wasn't small either. Estimates based on fossil tooth whorls suggest that some individuals could have reached lengths of 25 feet or more. Imagine a predator the size of a great white shark, armed with built-in circular saw in its mouth. It's the stuff of prehistoric nightmares. We're traveling back 390 million years to a time when life was first beginning to venture onto land. But we're not here for the terrestrial pioneers. We're here to meet one of the most formidable creatures ever to swim in Earth's oceans, Jacolopterus renania. Jacolopterus was a member of a group called the Eurypterids, better known as sea scorpions. But calling Jacolopterus a sea scorpion is like calling a tiger a big cat. It doesn't quite convey the sheer terror this creature could inspire. Imagine a scorpion the size of a crocodile. Jacolopterus stretched over eight feet long, making it one of the largest arthropods ever to exist. Its body was covered in a tough exoskeleton, providing formidable armor against potential predators. Not that it had many to worry about at its size, but the true terror of Jacolopterus lay in its front appendages. It possessed a pair of massive, pincer-like claws that it used to snatch prey right out of the water. These claws were lined with sharp, serrated edges, perfect for gripping slippery fish or tearing into the soft bodies of other marine creatures. Imagine swimming in a prehistoric sea and seeing this monstrous arthropod coming at you its giant claws outstretched. It's no wonder that Jacolopterus was likely the apex predator of its time and place. But size isn't Jacolopterus' only advantage. Like modern arthropods, it likely had compound eyes, giving it excellent vision for spotting prey. Its segmented body would have made it a powerful swimmer, able to dart through the water with surprising speed for its size. One of the most fascinating aspects of Jacolopterus is what it tells us about the history of life on Earth. This creature existed at a time when the largest animals lived in the seas. It would be millions of years before vertebrates on land would reach comparable sizes. Our final stop on this journey through prehistoric seas brings us to more familiar waters. The late Cretaceous period, around 145 to 66 million years ago. The age of dinosaurs is nearing its end, though the creatures living at this time have no way of knowing that. Among them is our final prehistoric ocean predator a creature that seems almost mundane compared to the bizarre beings we've encountered so far, but is no less fascinating. Hesperornis. At first glance, Hesperornis might not seem like much. It was a flightless bird, similar in many ways to modern diving birds like loons or grebes. But don't let its seemingly ordinary appearance fool you. Hesperornis was a highly specialized marine predator with some surprising adaptations. Picture a bird about the size of a goose, but with a long slender neck and a head that tapers to a pointed beak. Its wings were reduced to tiny stubs, useless for flight, but possibly helpful for steering underwater. Its powerful legs were positioned far back on its body, much like a modern penguin, making it an excellent swimmer, but awkward on land. But the truly remarkable feature of Hesperornis was hidden in its beak. Unlike modern birds, Hesperornis had a mouthful of sharp, pointed teeth. Hesperornis used these teeth to great effect as it dove underwater in pursuit of fish. It could likely dive to considerable depths, using its powerful legs to propel itself through the water and its toothed beak to snatch up slippery prey. Fossil evidence gives us a remarkably clear picture of how Hesperornis lived. 
we found fossils of these birds with the remains of fish preserved in their stomach areas, showing us exactly what they ate. We've even found fossils of baby Hesperornis, giving us insight into how these creatures raised their young. But life wasn't easy for Hesperornis, despite its impressive adaptations. The late Cretaceous seas were a dangerous place, filled with large marine reptiles like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. Fossils have been found showing bite marks from these larger predators on Hesperornis bones, a stark reminder that in the prehistoric oceans, even the hunters could become the hunted. Hesperornis is a fascinating example of convergent evolution, the process by which unrelated organisms evolve similar traits in response to similar environmental pressures. Though unrelated to modern diving birds, like penguins or loons, Hesperornis evolved many of the same adaptations for a life spent hunting in the water. The next time you dip your toes in the ocean, take a moment to remember these forgotten predators and the countless others like them.